Yeah. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Voice of the Street Preachers. Today we're featuring the northernmost street preacher that I've interviewed so far, and it's David from Pennsylvania, and uh, you get to meet him. I've gotten a chance to preach with him a few times, uh, north and south. Uh, today we're coming to you from uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, down here uh, preaching, and uh, David drove all the way down from Pennsylvania for the preach. So here he is, uh, my good friend. He gave me my favorite street. All right, well, this is David from Pennsylvania, and uh, we're here inside a cabin campground uh, in Myrtle Beach, uh, coming to you, not live. But uh, David, tell, uh, tell us a little bit. I, I haven't gotten to preach with you many times, but um, we have preached down in, uh, was it Mardi Gras or Southern Decadence? Uh, Southern Decadence, yeah. We've preached, it's funny, because I'm from North Carolina, he's from Pennsylvania, and Really, pretty much aside from today, the first time we, only time we ever preached together is way down in New Orleans. But, uh, David, how did you? Uh, how long you been doing this? And how in the world did you get started in this world of street preaching? Uh, I first started street preaching in 2012, and it was with uh, Brian Cranford and Reuben Israel at the Atheist Rally in Washington D.C. Mm. in March of 2012, and I got started. I just felt led and compelled to proclaim or preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and started out just walking in our own hometown and uh, praying for people, passing out tracts and just always get this overwhelming feeling inside of you to uh, say something. So uh, the Lord helped me to break the ice in D.C. Uh, in front of, actually it was the Lincoln Memorial is the first time I ever openly proclaimed the gospel. That's, pre that's pretty amazing. That's, that's, a, that's a fun first preach, I would imagine. It's a big event. Now, how long have you been a Christian before you've been doing this? Uh, I became a Christian in August of 2007. Wow. So I've been a Christian almost 11 years now. And in 2012, so it was roughly about five years into my... Uh, Christian life that uh, began to proclaim the gospel publicly. So, so I'm not understanding what what series of events led you into street preaching, though. I mean, it, you, you can't just how did you how did you come across these guys? I mean, it's okay. that's it's yeah. a strange world. How did you get into this? I don't get. It. Yeah, well, we'll give a lot of props to uh, YouTube, to the I guess I don't know what you call it social media or mm. whatever, but uh, people that were faithful to be uh, videoing. Uh, the work of God going on in the world, like Brian Cranford and Buddy Fisher. So you would come across videos at certain times and you know it just stirred in your heart that you know this is what God was talking about when he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Now when you became a Christian, is this what you had expected you'd be doing? Uh, uh, you expected you'd be out there with thousands of atheists at the Lincoln Memorial shouting at him about hell or what? Uh, no, sir. I, when I first became a Christian, I, uh, you know, I was wrapped up in churchianity or like we like to call it Christian dumb, and uh, it just you know where nothing's really spirit led. It's all led by the flesh and uh, man's tradition and religion. And I was reading the Word of God. I think that's something that uh, a lot of people that come to become a street preacher, they're actually in their Bible, reading the Bible, and being convicted by the Holy Spirit that uh, they need to, you know, they become compelled to go and do something more than what the church is doing. So that's how, that's how I uh, got overwhelmed by God's Spirit, you know, and reading the Word of God and convicted that we're supposed to do more than just fill pews. So I guess uh, I guess since you're a street preacher, you're out there in crowds shouting at people. I, I guess you you probably just have a naturally very uh, kind of boisterous, flamboyant, uh, theatrical personality. Would that be a true statement? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, that, that's the one thing that I, I think that I knew it was of God because I, I'm not in the flesh. I never was a confrontational person. I never was a, I was always a yes man, just wanted to go along with, you know, the, every, everything that was happening and didn't like a peacemaker, maybe, so to speak, with the world, but uh, that's so it's a it's a totally different uh, characteristic than what I had mm. naturally. 
guess. What it, what does it feel like to you when you're out there? If that's like not your normal personality, how do you get into how do you get into that mode? How do you get geared up? How do you do it if that's not kind of who you really are? Well, it's the it's the compassion of Jesus that compels us to go. We have to we have to overcome the flesh and follow the spirit. If the spirit is telling us that we need to go do this and no matter how my flesh feels, I need to obey God and what He wants me to do. Now, a lot of people think we're, we're hate mongers out there shouting at them about hell. So is that what motivates you? Your hatred? Is that what gets you out of, out of your house and out into the street you, because you hate these people? Is that, that, that your motivation? Uh, first and foremost, it's our love for Christ and what He's done for us and knowing that He loves those. Uh, it's His reward and we need to go and uh, call out to those that are called by God and pray that they come into the kingdom. So no, it's not motivated by hate. I hate the sin and I hate the world, and but we, we love God's uh, creation and uh, the purpose and the plan that He has for them and all that He's done for them. So we're compelled by love and not this hatred that people seem to mark us with. Yeah, now we live geographically pretty far away, but what, what, what kind of events do you do up there in Pennsylvania? What, what, what cities do you preach in and what, what kinds of events are you dealing with mostly? Uh, we preach to the cars and the cows where I live. So. <laughs> uh, but you know, that that's just one place that God has put us and you know, even even though people wonder what we're doing or uh, we do have some street fairs and things that we go to, little I call them mini Mardi Gras where they block off a little you know, street or two and get out the beer and the music and you know, they call it uh, family fun, we call it rebellious, but you know, even, even in those moments when we're out there and people, you know, oh, you just go and preach to cars and, and all these things, and cows. God's doing something. You get, you know, you the people come out of the alleyway smoking their cigarette. We have people that climb out of their apartment and sit on the roof behind a sign and listen to us, you know, so God's, God's working in all of it. Have you seen any cars and cows get saved? <laughs> no, no cars and cows can say. I've seen some cars trying to get us. Though. Now, uh, did I did I see you in uh, in a Groundhog's Day uh, event? Yes. Is that okay? Tell yeah. tell me about that. You're you're probably one of the one of the only preachers who's ever preached at a Groundhog's Day event. What what's that all about? Uh, that that uh, was at Punxsutawney Phil, right? Yeah. The, uh, the soothsayers come out and pull that little rat out of the hole and. <laughs> Fortunately, make him see a shadow. And by the way, it's still dark out when they do that, so there is no. The only shadow there is from the from the lights of the media and uh, the bonfire where all the college beer drinkers are at. But uh, yeah, the prediction of uh, the winter or spring. But yeah, it's just a good excuse for a town to make a lot of extra money off some drunken college kids, and uh, and it, it keeps going. So they, yeah, that's. Yeah, so you, you may be one of the few street preachers who preaches at a rodent-themed uh, event or whatever. Maybe aside from people preaching at Disney World or something. But uh, all right, what, what advice would you have for, uh, for somebody starting out? I mean, you, you haven't been doing this all this long, and you, you had that starting point. What advice would you have for somebody maybe watching this and thinking, I'd maybe like to get into this, but it's not my personality type. I don't know how to do it. What, what's your advice for a new person? Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, follow the Lord and uh, be obedient to His Spirit and to His Word. But uh, I'd say the, the biggest encouragement that I can give is uh, get yoked up with some other men and uh, really get fellowship and glean and uh, you know, test everything against the, the Scripture of the men that you're with. But at, at the same time, uh, get together with other men that are doing this and uh, it'll, it'll be a real blessing to you. Well, thank you. I wouldn't just one more question. This has been uh, uh, Dave from Pennsylvania. I think the most important question of all we have here today is what's up with that beard? What's yeah. going on with that beard? Tell us the story behind that. Uh, the beard? I don't know. God, God put it there. I just, <laughs> God put it there. <laughs> if you saw what was under here, you might, you, might want to, you might want me to have the beard. So. Is it staying forever? Is that, is that going to be a permanent feature of your ministry? I, I don't. It's, it's not a trademark. I don't think. I hope it isn't a trademark or anything, but 
Okay. Yeah, I just, I, I like the beer. My wife doesn't hate it, so <laughs> it works out fine. Have you ever preached out front of like a ZZ Top concert or anything? No, no. Oh, okay. No, no. All right. All right. Well, this is uh, any other advice you have? Any other uh, thing you'd like people to know about you or about street preaching out there? Uh, about me, I, I'm nothing. And I think as, as soon as we begin to think we're something, I, I just was reading the scriptures in Philippians when Paul was commending Timothy this, this week. And uh, he said that all seek after their own and none seek that which belongs to Christ. And I think of the, the church that hasn't come to Jesus yet. You know, the people that are being called, the, the reason that we're still around and we're, we're preaching in the streets. Uh, a lot of groups and a lot of people, I think, unfortunately, are seeking after their own. And we want to make sure and examine ourselves that we're not doing that. We're not seeking to establish a group or a, a people that just wants to impress their image on others. We want to seek the church that belongs to Christ. Amen. And uh, so that's that's all I really had to say. Awesome. Thank you much for your time. This has been Dave from uh, Pennsylvania. If you ever uh, if you ever get up to Groundhog's Day, look him up and uh, stand beside him and preach with him. And we thank you very much. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thanks, buddy.